Hello everyone, and welcome to the Retail Apocalypse Mall series, where we focus on the current happenings of dead and struggling malls throughout the country. This video covers the Shopping Town Mall and the town of DeWitt in suburban Syracuse, New York. Built by Egan Real Estate of Syracuse, Shopping Town was opened on March 3, 1954, as an open-air shopping center. The plaza initially featured Woolworths, W.T. Grant, a dry goods only J.C. Penney, the Addis Company, Flaws, Grand Union, and an Acme supermarket. A single screen Callet Theater was opened around the backside of the property on March 20, 1957, as well as the addition of Syracuse based Day Brothers on the north end. Rochester based E.W. Edwards came to Shopping Town in 1968 by way of a three-level, 150,000-square-foot store built around the backside of the property. This rendered the old Callet Theater inaccessible, and a new twin-screen theater was built to replace it, opening right after Christmas that year. It was quickly becoming apparent that the strip mall model was becoming outdated. Egan Development, as the firm was now known, had started planning their Pencan Mall project in nearby Cicero, and were hoping that expanding Shopping Town into an enclosed mall would boost fortunes there as well. Construction began in 1970, headed by the local architect firm of Sergeant Webster Crenshaw and Foley. The Acme supermarket and portions of the southern end of the strip mall were demolished, and the remainder was reworked into an enclosed hallway and expanded eastward, connecting to the Edwards space, forming an L shape. The E.W. Edwards store closed around this time and was replaced by a full-line J.C. Penney, which was at the time the largest between Buffalo and Boston. The new Shopping Town Mall was dedicated August 7, 1975, featuring 75 stores and services, encompassing 476,200 square feet. Nearby malls sprouted up one by one, namely Fayetteville Mall to the east and the aforementioned Pencan Mall to the north, but neither held much of a threat to Shopping Town, and they each complemented one another. A small expansion in 1987 added Syracuse-based Chapel's department store onto the east end of the mall. By 1988, Square footage totaled 608,700, with over 100 stores and services throughout the mall. The following year, Rochester-based Wilmerite Incorporated purchased Shopping Town. At the same time, Syracuse-based Pyramid Companies was constructing their carousel center on the shores of Onondaga Lake. Not wanting their newly acquired property to be outshined so quickly, Wilmerite embarked on a renovation and expansion project. Headed by architect Simon Wong and Associates of New York, the mall was expanded to the northeast, featuring an all-new Addison Days department store and a 10-bay food court and carousel as the centerpiece. Connections were made to Chapels and J.C. Penney from this new wing as well. The mall's roof was opened up and replaced with all-glass skylights throughout, as well as new flooring, planters, benches, and fountains. Upon opening, Carousel Center proceeded to decimate most of the older shopping centers in the surrounding area, but Shopping Town was one of the few survivors and cemented itself as the number two shopping destination in town. Many changes to the anchor lineup occurred over the next five years. Addison Days and their new digs left their old spot at the other end of the mall empty. The space was taken up by Steinbach on the main level and a TJ Maxx downstairs, the latter of which was only accessible to the parking lot. Both were opened by 1992. A year later, Addison Days was bought by the May Company and merged into their Kaufman's division. In 1995, Chapels was taken over by the Bonton, Woolworths closed and was replaced by Media Play, and finally, Sears moved from the declining Fayetteville Mall to take over the Steinbach TJ Maxx space. The last big change for the 90s occurred in 1997 when Hoyt Cinemas opened a 10-screen movie theater in the original first-level wing of the mall, condensing the mall's lower level to the new expansion. The now four-screen Callet Theater in the parking lot, now operating under the Cinema National name, was demolished. Dick's Sporting Goods opened a newly constructed space in October of 2000.
By the mid-2000s, Wiltmerite was condensing their portfolio of properties. They handed off several malls, shopping town included, to Santa Monica, California-based Mace Rich Company. Mace Rich paid $87.7 million for the mall. At the time of purchase, the mall's first major store closure came in the form of the Bonton, who pulled out of the mall due to lagging sales. In response, Mace Rich launched plans to boost the mall's stagnating fortunes. Their plan was to demolish the entirety of the Sears wing and make it into a strip center, much like the property's original configuration. Sears, Media Play, and Dick's would be retained, and new stores would be constructed in between them. Media Play ended up closing due to bankruptcy later that year, and the rest of the stores in the hallway were booted. However, these plans were brought to a halt by the effects of the 2008 recession, competition from nearby shopping centers such as the Town Center at Fayetteville, and an increasing exodus of national tenants from the mall. Mace Rich over time neglected the mall. They requested several tax abatements to renovate, and each was shot down. They started to fall behind in payments, eventually foreclosing on the property. Instead of paying off the $39 million mortgage payment, Maesrich walked away, and the mall was handed off to a receivership in 2011. Miami-based LNR Properties purchased the mall, but remained quiet about any plans. This prompted the town of DeWitt to put the mall up for auction, and a winning bidder was reached on August 20, 2013. Las Vegas-based Moonbeam Capital Investments took over operations of the mall for $13.6 million. Over the following year, Moonbeam made note of plans to revitalize the mall, adding office space, a hotel, and even to resurrect Maesrich's plan of demolishing the Sears wing for an open-air promenade. However, these plans never came to fruition, and the mall's problems were just beginning.
Macy's, which had taken over for Kaufman's back in 2006, threw in the towel and closed their store in May of 2015. Dick's Sporting Goods would follow, moving down the road to a new power center in October. Numerous smaller stores were leaving the mall, and national chains were a less common sight. The now vacant Sears wing was largely filled with community-oriented businesses, such as a gymnastic studio, dance studios, martial arts, and a skate shop in the old media play. In April of 2016, J.C. Penney, a charter tenant since the mall's beginnings, called it quits. Throughout 2017, Moonbeam remained largely quiet on their plans, not communicating with the town, and they began to fall behind on tax payments. DeWitt officials have threatened to auction the mall and have sued Moonbeam to get plans moving forward and the back taxes paid off, but to no avail. Moonbeam, in turn, has sued the town, claiming their intrusions and backyard dealings are making it hard to redevelop the site. Meanwhile, the mall continues to fall into disrepair, with broken tile, stained carpets, and water leaks throughout. Aside from the community wing, the only businesses remaining are an expanded Regal Cinemas, Rite Aid, and Lens Crafters. August 2018 brought the closure of Sears, leaving the mall anchorless. The future of Shopping Town is in serious doubt. Its future as a mall is all but washed away by the callousness of their absentee slumlord owners. Moonbeam currently owes $9.7 million in unpaid taxes to the town of DeWitt. One party against the other, and Shopping Town is caught in the middle, losing a battle whose outcome has already been predetermined. The mall continues to crumble, and as each gate lowers and another store closes, so too does the door looking back to a better past in favor of a far darker present. <laughs> 